So we've already learned how to name two types of compounds, those being ionic compounds and acids. But we're going to encounter a third type of inorganic compound regularly, referred to as binary molecular compounds. Now, you can identify them as such because binary is implying that there are two things in the compound, two elements. And molecular implies that they are molecules, meaning the two elements you see in these compounds are both typically nonmetals. Now, examples of such compounds are below. We have two elements in this compound, and we notice that they are both nonmetals. Same as the case here, two elements, both nonmetals. Nitrogen and bromine, both nonmetals. Nitrogen and oxygen, both nonmetals. So these are all examples of binary ionic com or binary molecular compounds, excuse me. Now, in order to name them, you need to know a few things. A few facts have to be in evidence. First, you're going to need to know the numerical prefixes for certain numbers of things, like 2, 3, 3, 4, 1, etc. And we use the Greek prefixes designating these values, and you must learn these and know these in order to play the game. If you have one of something, it's also referred to as mono. In the old days, as a matter of fact, uh, before there were stereo, uh, systems, we used to have mono recordings, which used only one speaker. Di is a reference to two of something. Tri, as in a tricycle with three wheels, indicates three. Tetra, for, in, for instance, a tetrahedron is a four-sided figure. A Tetris is that game you like to play on Game Boy, where you try and create four lines. Uh, and then the rest are penta for five, hexa, as in a hex bolt that has six sides at Home Depot or Lowe's, has six of something. Hepta, not the common mistake that some people who have taken Latin think is septa, but hepta is the Greek prefix for seven. Octa for eight, like an octopus that has eight legs. Nona is the reference for nine, and deca precedes 10 of something. So if we know these, we're going to need them when we go to name these binary compounds. Because if we have four of something, we're going to have to say we have four oxygens. We'll use the prefix tetra. If we have three of something, we're going to use the prefix tri. If we have two of something, we're going to use the prefix di. So it's important that we know these prefixes. Also, there are five simple rules you're going to follow. Uh, and I'll use these examples to follow these rules. The first rule is to name the first element by that element's name. So if we scroll up to these examples, well, this element is carbon. So I'm going to start this name off simply as carbon something. This one starts with boron. So I'm simply going to start the name with boron. This one begins with nitrogen. So the first part of the name would be nitrogen. Same is the case with this one, nitrogen. So the first rule is pretty simple. When we see a binary compound, we're simply going to name the first element as the first element. The second rule is, if there is more than one atom of that first element, use a prefix to indicate how many. Well, there aren't more than one carbon atoms in this compound, so I put no prefix in this case. It says if there's more than one of the first element, but there's only one boron, so I would not use a prefix. Same as the case here. If there's more than one, I'd use a prefix, but there's only one, so I don't use a prefix. However, in the fourth example, we do have two of the first element, and the prefix for two is di. So this is dinitrogen something. Now, third rule, very simply is name the second element as if it were a monatomic anion. And of course, all the monatomic anions of nonmetals have a name that ends in IDE. So if the second element is oxygen in this compound, I would use oxide as the name for the second part. And since fluorine is in this compound, I would use fluoride as part of the name. 
are getting pretty jammed up here. So if I have bromine, the second part of this name would be bromide. And if I see oxygen, the second part of this name would be oxide. So no problem. Carbon, maybe something oxide. Boron, maybe something fluoride. Nitrogen, maybe something bromide. And dinitrogen, maybe something oxide. Now, rule four and rule five will go together here. Rule five says, always use a prefix designating how many of the second element atoms there are. Now, by always using a prefix, that means if there were only one, I would use the prefix mono. But all these have more than one, so I'll use their various prefixes. So if there are two oxygens, I wouldn't just call this carbon oxide, I'd call this carbon dioxide. Now, because there are three fluorines, I wouldn't just call this boron fluoride. I call this boron trifluoride. And because we have three bromines in this case, this wouldn't just be nitrogen bromide. It would be nitrogen tribromide. And lastly, two nitrogens and four oxygens is dinitrogen. And the prefix for four of something is tetra. But that takes us to our fifth rule. When numeric prefixes ending in an O or A, such as tetra, ends in an A, precede an element whose name begins with an O or an A. And in this case, this begins with an O or an A. The rule says to drop the O or A from the prefix. So the temptation is to write tetra oxide for this compound. However, that sounds like you got a problem if you say tetraoxide. So we're going to drop the ORA from the preceding uh, prefix to name this compound. And it's much more fluid off the tongue if we call it dinitrogen tetroxide. So yes, we would drop the ORA from a prefix, and all but two of them have O's or A's. Never drop the I, always keep the I. But if you have an O or an A at the end of one of these prefixes and it precedes an O or an A, drop the O or A from the prefix to name the compound. So, pretty simple rules. We can practice some more here. So, right underneath our rules, if I were to see this, CO. Well, I named the first element by its name. That's carbon. Uh, if there's more than one, I'd use a prefix, but there's only one carbon in this compound. So rule three is name the second element as if it were a monatomic anion, ending in IDE. So oxygen would be called oxide. And then we always use a prefix designating how many of the second, even if there's only one. And the prefix for one of something is mono. However, let's not forget, if the prefix ends in ORA, which mono does, and it precedes a name beginning with ORA, which it will, we drop the O or the A from the prefix. So I wouldn't call this carbon monoxide, because again, that sounds like you got a problem. Instead, we call it carbon monoxide. Simple enough. What if I were to see this compound then, Ni3? Well, the name of the first element is nitrogen. There's only one atom of it, so no prefix. Name of the second element, if it were an anion, iodine would be called iodide. Iodide. I'll erase here. Nice and clean. And, of course, we would always use a prefix designating how many. And three of something is try. Now, try doesn't end in an O or A, so I don't drop anything from the prefix. It's simply try. And so I end up with two I's in the word. And yes, this is called nitrogen triiodide. No problem. A couple more examples then. Let's say we saw this, P2O5. Name of the first element, phosphorus. Phosphorus. 
If there's more than one, and there is in this case, use a prefix. Prefix for two is die. Name the second element as if it were a monatomic anion. Oxide. And always use a prefix. Prefix for five, penta. And penta ends in A, and it precedes an O, so I drop the A from the prefix. And it's simply diphosphorus pentoxide. One last example, maybe then, Cl2O7. Well, the first element is chlorine. And we have two of them, so this would be dichlorine. Second element, named as a monatomic anion, would be oxide. And the prefix for seven is hepta. And hepta ends in A, and the A precedes an O, so we drop the A. Heptoxide dichlorine heptoxide, and that's how you name binary molecular compounds.